Welcome to our virtual youth group today. We've got uh, Snack and Chat. Now we have a little warm up. I'm gonna have a little brain games challenge here for you. So let's check this out. So what we're gonna do is this. Um, I'm gonna pop this on the screen. And uh, we've got a brain blitz illusion challenge. And you, what you're gonna do is, I'll pop this first one up here for you so you get an idea what's going on. So you're gonna just solve this problem here, or try to figure it out. And then um, if you can, shoot me your answers via text or not text just you know up on the comments here on uh, the Facebook live um, let's see how you do I'll give you some shout outs um, I have some shout outs from last um, broadcast I had for the family Lodato C shout out to sister Helen Herman um, Mary Skilling over Plattsburgh she runs youth over there um, Courtney Christensen she rocks she's another Plattsburghian uh, let's see who else we had on there. Oh my goodness. I know there was someone else. Oh, they're going to get mad at me. I'm sorry. Well, you're going to have to tune in right now so we can give you a shout out. Sorry, right, back to the brain blitz. So if you uh, have an idea, just shoot me a comment and tell me what you think of this. So here we go. Are the squares inside the blue and yellow squares all the same color? I don't know. Let me look at this. Hmm. I won't hang on these too long. It's just to kind of like get your brains going. Let's see, no one has an answer. I'm thinking, I don't know. Maybe they're not. All right, let's find out. So, ooh, okay, so this is called the bezeled effect. The smaller squares inside the blue and yellow squares are all the same color. Oh, oh okay, I was wrong. <laughs> they seem different, magenta and orange because the color is perceived differently depending on its relation to adjacent colors. Yeah, he lost me at magenta and orange. Okay, so anyway, they're all the same. Next one. Are the horizontal lines straight or crooked? All right, let me check this out. Um, yeah, I'm thinking they're crooked. All right, let's see. The horizontal lines are straight. Oh, bummer. Even though they do not seem straight. In this illusion, the vertical zigzag patterns disrupt our horizontal perception. Man. Okay. Ooh. How many legs does this elephant ha have? Let me see. Well, first off, I can't even read. So I don't know how I'm supposed to figure out how many legs this thing has. Um. Huh. Five. What do you guys think? No, you're not. Right? Okay, good one, Mary. Got that. I'm thinking five on this elephant. I've got to wait a little longer. I'm noticing there's a little delay between what, what I popped the slide up and when... Um, there you go, four. Mary's got four. Okay. So here we go. Let's find out. All right. Tricky, isn't it? This picture is an impossible picture that also contains some subjective contours, such as a can, wow, can is a triangle below. A white triangle pointing down can be seen in this figure, even though no triangle is actually drawn. Oh yeah, you're right. Wacky. This effect is known as a subjective or a illusory contour. The contour of the triangle is created by the shapes around it. So the answer is Five. Five. I wonder if you can see my cursor. No. There's one under here. Oh, I give up. <laughs> All right. This one I'll leave up for a bit. Let's see. Can you put the fish in the fishbowl? Stare at the yellow stripe in the middle of the fish in the picture below for about 10 to 20 seconds. Then move your gaze to the fishbowl. All right. I'm, I'm going to give it a shot. I should turn my camera on so you can see how... Um, how silly I look right now. Oh my gosh. Okay, my eyes just crossed. Ouch. Yeah. Oh, it's in the bowl. Ha <laughs> I did it. <laughs> how about you guys? Any luck? Did you get the fish in the bowl? What do you think? Hmm. I have just a couple more. Trust me. 
They call this an after image. In the retina of your eyes, there are three types of color receptors, cones, that are most sensitive to either red, blue, or green. When you stare at a particular color too long, these receptors get fatigued. When you then look at a different background, the receptors that are tired do not work as well. Therefore, the information from all of the different color receptors is not in balance. This will create the color after, after images. All right, so that's cool. I think I've seen something like that before. I just have a couple more. Hang in there. Because our brains are getting fatigued now. Let's see. Are the two horizontal lines of the same length? So are these guys the same length? Hold on. Let me look at this. I'm thinking... It looks like no, but I'm going to say yes because I know this is some trick thing. Let's see what my my team set up here. Whoop. They're the same. Yep. Mueller liar illusion. The two horizontal lines are of the same length even though the one at the bottom seems longer. Boy, that's a big explanation. I'm going to I'm going to do what I used to do in school and skip ahead. <laughs> That didn't, that didn't do too well for me. Luckily, I, made, I, I passed in school, and I am thus here in front of you. So in the Mueller liar illusion, the brain perceives the line with outward flaps to be at a farther point as compared to the line with inward flaps. Huh, that's pretty cool. That one kind of messed with me. All right, I think this is our last one. Let's see. Do you see gray dots at the intersections of the white lines? Oh, yeah, totally. They're like all over there. Bang. Well, that's a lot of fun, but it's kind of freaking me out. That's too many gray dots for me. Hey, let me see what the answer is here. You guys see gray dots? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> nice shout out to Nancy. Mary, yep. Very good. And Christian. Hey, Christian Grotto, my man. Good to see you. All right, what do we got? The Herman grid illusion. The, what? There are not gray dots in this grid. Right. However, ghost-like gray blobs are perceived at the intersection of the white lines. They disappear when looking directly at, at an intersection. This illusion can be explained by a neural process happening in the visual system called lateral inhibition. The capacity of an active neuron to reduce the activity of its neighbors. Well, that was a whole bunch of fun. That was interesting. It really does point to how amazing the human and body is and the functions of the human anatomy and the gift that we have that God has given us. It's pretty amazing. Um, moving forward, um, before we do our presentation, I wanted to um, just let you know about MJM7. And they sent us a special message. MJM7 is a band. They were slotted to uh, perform... Um, for IHE's uh, March retreat. And uh, due to the coronavirus outbreak, they weren't able to, to come. So they were really bummed out. But we also have the opportunity to have them come through um, in August, August 2nd at Plattsburgh at the Newman Center. And MJM7 is a family band. We have um, Michael, a dad, we, and he has four daughters, and they all perform together. And they do... Um, a wonderful job of they have a whole whole thing to do it's pretty cool so they sent us a little message here I want to play this for you learn to, to sing stuff when she has to okay take 14 my name is Michael James Meddy <laughs> we're here at Catholic Family Man. we call ourselves and these are my four oldest daughters we're here at our home studio in Illinois mm -hmm. and we're so excited we're gonna be uh, able to be with you later on this summer God willing um, for all this crazy stuff ha um, kind of lets up uh, we play concerts, we travel around the country, so happy to uh, to do that. And we're coming to you live from our new home studio, Fidelity Studio, and um, I wanted to play a song uh, that's inspired by a poem that was written hundreds of years ago. The poem is called The Canticle of the Sun. It was written by... St. Francis. St. Francis. Oh, I missed that. <laughs> and uh, he, uh, he wrote this poem that was talking about all creation giving glory to God. And Pope Francis, hundreds of years later, just recently, when he uh, wrote his encyclical, his first encyclical, Laudatio Si, he quoted that that's actually where that comes from, from the Canticle of the Sun. 
And so, uh, fun fact, this was actually sung at my wedding 21 years ago when my lovely wife, Michelle, walked down the aisle uh, on a crazy Friday night. So everyone said, aw. Because I thought it was a beautiful song. So we're going to sing it for you here today. The heavens are telling the glory of God. And all creation is shouting for joy. Come dancing above and come flying up in. And sing, sing to the glory of the Lord. Praise for the sun, the bringer of day. He carries the light of the Lord in his rays. The moon and the stars who light up their way unto your throne. The heavens are telling the glory of God. And all creation is shouting for joy. From dance and the bows, come play the field. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great day. God be praised. 
All right. Awesome, awesome. Where am I here? I can't see myself. Oh, there we are. Ah, hello. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed that. I gotta pray hard for them to come. They bring a whole show and they, they do praise and worship and they have, um, they just do a great, great, great thing. So we'll hopefully we'll have them to the Newman Center in Plattsburgh. Um, Mary Skillian's running that over there and gonna help her out. We're gonna work from now until August to try to figure out how we can make it safe for everybody. And um, we're gonna feed you too, I think. Right, Mary? Hopefully it's okay. <laughs> So it's going to be great, guaranteed. So let's move on to my, my presentation here. I want to talk a little bit about Laudato C um, for you for young people, okay? And um, you know, there's there's a lot of points in Laudato C, but I picked like a few that I think um, kind of stick out and stuff we can really kind of grab onto for now to get started with. Um, so let me jump up. Oh, I just lost the light. Oh no. Well, that's okay. You can still see me. So we'll start right here. Let me get on over here. So, Pope Francis, uh, he really looks to St. Francis of Assisi, uh, obviously, as his guide and inspiration for Laudato Si, probably for a lot of, of what Pope Francis has done in his life, but don't quote me on that, but I have a feeling that St. Francis of Assisi was a very big influence on him. Um, what I'm sharing with you today, uh, it, a lot of it's taken right words right from Pope Francis's uh, encyclical. Okay, and he says, Saint Francis of Assisi shows us just how inseparable the bond is between concern for nature, justice for the poor, commitment to society, and interior peace. It's important to understand that you know the Laudato Sea isn't just an Earth Day. It isn't just we take care of trees and the animals. It's we take care of everything and everyone on this planet. That's we take care of each other. Um, St. Francis understood this uh, connectivity between all living things, okay? And the earth as well. So you have to kind of wrap, wrap your mind around that. You gotta think like, you know, somehow, you know, you don't have to understand it. We're just human, it's okay. You don't have to be some kind of, uh, a person that sits in a cave and figures out life, it doesn't matter. Jesus only calls us really to do one thing, which is to take care of each other, to love and to share in joy and in our sorrows. Um, I think the rest is just gravy, but if we just do that, I think we're going to be okay. So you'll find out that taking care of the earth, taking care of each other, and taking care of um, our spirituality are key here. Got to wrap yourself around that. So. One of the other, we'll begin with this main topic here. So Pope Francis believes that pollution, waste, and a throwaway culture, okay? We are now uh, immersed in this, just a lot of junk. There really is. I mean, we're very fortunate here in the Diocese of Ogdensburg to live in a really beautiful place. And for the most part, we don't see a lot of, uh, a lot of junk and pollution, but it's there. Um, it's in our waterways, it's in our soil, and, um, you know, we work hard to clean it up, we work hard to control it, but it's still there. And it's just, it's a product of humanity and us just doing our thing and kind of not paying attention. So we gotta, we gotta do that. But this uh, throwaway culture, it's kind of started in like the 50s. You know, <clears throat> I'm not blaming any certain era or any generation. It's just the way humanity evolved. Um, you know, life was really hard when you go back, 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 back. and you know, it's just our human nature to try to make our lives simpler and safer and more dependable. And so, so we have these byproducts. So this throwaway society where we, you know, wrap stuff up in plastic because it's just more convenient. And then, then we throw the plastic away. And then that fills landfills like you see here. You know, if you look here, uh, this is the only, I'll show you, you know, some things we can do. Here's an idea. Um, instead of using plastic wrap, you know, use beeswax cloth instead of sandwich bags. Use silicone uh, washable bags. Um, you're hearing a lot about this, I'm sure. We're all talking about environmental change. So instead of throwaway straws, use silicone or steel. You know, find alternatives. Take a second, and you only need to do a little bit. Just take a second to think about, okay, 
Um, you know, if I drink, use enough of these, these. If I use a good this straw, which I reuse like forever, yeah, it takes a little effort to keep it clean. Okay, but you know, it's a small price to pay for it. Maybe, you know, not destroying our world for children's children, more children. So we've all got to do our part. A little bit of work, a little bit of play. That's how it is. So um, if you ever want ideas, I'll just quickly pop this in here on how to combat any of this, you know, like uh, throwaway culture, all this stuff here, uh, the pollution. You know, there's a ton of resources online and we do have our Ladado C to turn to. And within Ladado C are resources as well. Like there's lots of links and just really is a lot of people out there trying to make a difference. So it's easy to find uh, ways to do it. Uh, another point that Pope Francis makes is that our climate, he treated, it's like a common good. It's like it's something special that belongs to all of us. It's like, a, I don't want to say it's a commodity, but the fact that it it's belongs to all of us means it affects everything. Uh, you know, the climate change, it's a global problem uh, with, with grave implications. Um, environmental, social, economic, and and it also this if we don't curtail or curb climate change, we're gonna lose our food supplies. We're going to you know just we're gonna ruin our atmosphere. It's inevitable. Um, I can't tell you how many movies are just showing us it's like we show ourselves in the movies how um, we just keep up this type of behavior. It's not gonna go good. So I don't want to get dark on you, but um, it's there. You know, it's a true thing. I mean, you can see this, just the effects of climate change. We've had wild, crazy fires and floods, and it's all right there in the news. You know, you can see the effects. This is also affecting our food supply, big time. Um, you know, a good little example, if you're paying attention to coronavirus outbreak here, we had a little, probably, a, I want to say a big scare for some, a little scare for others. But we had an outbreak in some of the meat plants, the processing plants, where a lot of employees became sick and had to go home. And that little bit, just a few plants, caused the food supply, the meat supply to drop. And that was just a little thing. I mean, imagine when we are on it, we cannot control the environment and it just starts shifting and we're losing crops and food. So we have to really use our brains and our hearts, these gifts that God gave us, and we can figure it out. We definitely could figure out ways to maneuver and uh, figure out how we can, you know, treat our planet better, you know, treat each other better. Another important aspect is the right of water. Water is key in survival. Without water, you know, we will not survive. This whole planet is basically water. We are basically water, um, believe it or not. And, um, and in a lot of parts of the world, People just do not have good drinking water, and it just deprives them of of the life and the right to life, to live. Um, so it's important that we work to, to try to keep our water clean, that we advocate, which means we let people know when they're doing something wrong. Some of the politicians saying, hey, you know, there's this river, and their their boats are just dumping stuff over the side, you know, and let people know. It, no voice is too small. You can make a difference. You know, you have people in certain parts of the world that you know that water is not clean in this picture. You know, but yet they have to drink it. Uh, another main point is loss of biodiversity. You know, if the animals disappear, we will disappear. Um, you know, because of us, really it's our activity on this planet. Uh, and I'm going to take these words right from Lodato. Okay, I'm going to read these to you. Um, St. Francis, Pope Francis says, you know, it's funny, we all say that. Maybe someday he'll be a saint. Who's, we'll see. <laughs> Pope Francis, uh, he says, we all have access to safe, drinkable water is a basic and universal human right. Since it is essential to human survival and as such is a condition for the exercise of other human rights. Many poor people in developing and third world nations lack access to clean drinking water. Because of this, they are denied the right to a life consistent with their inalienable dignity. There's wars fought over water. Seriously. Um, or I'm sorry, the biodiversity. Did I read you the water? I read you the water. I apologize. 
Now to biodiversity. <laughs> we were are often aware of the extinction of animal species. Okay, so like the elephants and lions and tigers, you know, you see that, oh, they're going extinct. But really, we have to pay attention to uh, like things like fungi and insects, you know, fungi or mushrooms. They do so much in our environment. Uh, coral reefs, absolutely essential in our survival, our survival, not just the fish. They do so much, so much goes on in the coral re uh, reef and you can research that uh, online. Our glaciers, our glaciers are melting, causing all kinds of weather disruptions and they're melting rapidly, that's the problem. Too fast because of our activity. You know, the bees, the insects, you know, if we didn't have bees, if the bees were eliminated one day, we would die. The whole planet would be done because they pollinate all the different plant species. Um, it's really important that we pay attention to this. Here's a nice um, verse out of uh, the Bible. All of creation knows its creator. But ask the animals, and they will teach you, or the birds in the sky, and they will tell you, or speak to the earth, and it will teach you, or let the fish in the sea inform you. Which of all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? In his hand is the life of every creature and the breath of all mankind. This is from Job 12, 7, 10. I mean, basically right here this is telling you, uh, a neat little thing I try to do a lot is just to quiet down a little bit and just pay attention to the world around me. It's real easy to do that and go fishing. You go out hiking, um, step out to your backyard and you know stop, don't play a game on your video games and just listen for like a minute. And it'll talk to you. You know the earth talks to you, the, the creatures and you know not literally, but you'll understand. You'll get this sense. They call it, it's like your spidey sense. Um, another main uh, topic is global inequality. And these words will be the right words from Pope Francis. A true ecological approach always becomes a social approach. It must integrate questions of justice and debates on the environment. So as to hear both the cry of the earth and the cry of the poor. So we have to, uh, when when work our politicians, our government officials, uh, as family members and as our own selves going about, we have to think bigger and not just like, well, um, uh, I just need to fill my belly or I just need to have this snack right now and I don't care about anything else. You know, we gotta, gotta kinda go bigger. It's like, how, how do my actions affect that person? You think of the other. here from Deuteronomy and you are to love those who are foreigners for you yourselves are foreigners in Egypt so remember we are all refugees at some point or another you know we're all um, living on the outskirts of society at some point or another or the society so you know no one's better than anyone else just remember that we're all equal we're all God's children this is a nice point um, that Pope Francis makes. It's the gospel of creation. He references that. No longer should we understand that humans are dominant creation. It is now the responsibility of humans to serve creation. Uh, you know, he, Pope says, a true ecological approach always becomes a so social approach. So that's that's what Laudato see. It's combined. It's, ecolo it's ecology. It's a so social, social um, approach. You got to think about um, questions of justice and environment. They have to be. They have to work together all the time. Okay. 
Um, so where do you fit into this? So what do we do in, you know, Watertown or Ogdensburg or, Sh- or Sh- yeah, Shazy, Shattagay, Plattsburgh, our little part of the world? Um, you know, what do we do? So I say just start small, start local, and then just grow the movement by, you know, sharing with others what you're doing. I won the Green Apple Award for a project that I did to get all of this plastic straws out of our cafeteria. I just woke up one morning like I want to do, I want to try to save the environment. We saw a bunch of pictures of animals dying from that and we got concerned and we tried to stop in our area. The idea I came up with is we get rid of the plastic straws and try to replace them with bamboo, paper, or metal. At the end of last year we were thinking of doing a compost and my friends seem to be all on board with it so I'm pretty excited. Great job Anna. Doing good things, taking small steps to make a big difference in our world. Check out these resources right here on the slide. You can also visit our diocesan website at www.rcdony.org. Find the Ladado C link or visit the Youth Office link. If I haven't mentioned this before, my name is Tom Samarero, the Director of Youth Ministry for the Diocese of Ogdensburg. And I want to leave you with this prayer of St. Francis. And I hope you enjoy it. God bless. Make me a channel of your peace Where there is hatred, let me bring your love Where there is injury or pardon, Lord And where there's doubt, you fail Despair